Adams is pushing back against Texas Governor Greg Abbott's efforts sending tens of thousands of migrants to New York City. Six Adams additional buses arrived at the Port Authority bus terminal overnight, hours after Mayor Adams issued a new executive order requiring 32-hour notice. This comes after 14 buses arrived from Texas in just one night. Fines and even criminal charges could be the consequences, according to the city. So that we can be prepared so that when the migrants do arrive to New York City, we can get them to where they need to get to safely. You are allowed to drop off migrants in the city, but you're going to do it at the location that we specify so we don't overtax our resources, our manpower. Every day, millions of American taxpayer dollars are spent on catering for immigrants. And in New York alone, hundreds of thousands of migrants have arrived in the city over the last year. This has affected the economy and worsened the living conditions of locals. Yet more immigrants arrive at the borders daily. Why are immigrants trooping to America? And what are the effects? Before we look into this, please subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up. The history of immigration in the United States dates back to the earliest inhabitants migrating from Asia. Then, the European exploration and settlement brought another wave of immigration with levels fluctuating greatly over the centuries. This gives America a long history of immigration, and so it has frequently changed policies, approaches, and ideas on immigration to fit the situation at the time. Today, American immigration policy is at the center of political and economic debates centering around some of the challenges and resources associated with immigration in the United States. And with one-fifth or approximately 44 million of the world's international immigrants living in the United States, there are important issues to look at through economic, social, and security issues related to immigration. For example, in New York alone, over 150,000 migrants have arrived before the end of the year. Worse still, these people are from all over the world, and sometimes they arrive by the thousands each week until the city's homeless shelter population reaches record highs and has failed to drop. It has been so terrible that the city officials have called it a humanitarian crisis that will cost the city about 12 billion dollars over three years. In fact, the city mayor declared a state of emergency after it was announced that they were running out of rooms at the shelters in 2023. Governor Healy just declared a state of emergency in Massachusetts because of the number of migrants arriving in Massachusetts. This has led the government to source for funds and expedited work authorizations for migrants. This has raised the big question, where on planet Earth are the immigrants coming from? Well, many arrivals to New York City in 2023 were Venezuelans who had entered through the southern border. More than 7 million refugees and migrants had left Venezuela, a country of 29 million people, as of February. And according to the United Nations Commission, it's been declared the second largest external displacement crisis in the world. Although more recently, a large number of migrants have also been coming from countries in Africa. Some are also coming from China. To cope with this high number of migrants, New York transformed a former hotel in Midtown into a migrant intake center and created a new agency to help coordinate their arrivals. Yet the city's response has not been enough as the shelter system has become more strained. More than 67,000 migrants were staying in city homeless shelters as of late November 2023. And in total, 122,000 people were staying in homeless shelters across the city, officials said. So to control the crowd, the city has proposed using different locations as emergency housing for migrants. It has housed people in hotels, emergency tent shelters on Randall's Island, school gymnasiums and office buildings and is now looking to new places like the parking lot of a state psychiatric hospital. Unfortunately, many of the proposals have been met with pushback from residents and in some cases the plans were paused. In fact, at one point, the city mayor seriously considered housing migrants on cruise ships. In all, the city has opened more than 214 shelter sites, including 18 humanitarian relief centers for asylum seekers. And as more and more migrants arrive, the city officials keep changing the messaging and approaches to sheltering them. One of the new approaches is to relieve the city of some of its legal obligations under its unique right to shelter mandate. 
So an executive order was used to suspend some of the requirements under the mandate in anticipation of an influx of new migrants. Interestingly, the city receives tens of thousands of new arrivals each year. But since the spring of 2022, numbers have been rising real quick. More than 118,000 migrants and asylum seekers, most of whom hail from countries in Latin America and the Caribbean, have arrived after crossing the U.S.-Mexico border. In actual fact, this is not totally unusual by historical standards because between 2010 and 2019, the city added nearly half a million foreign migrants to its population. But the most recent surge has still strained city services. Today's migrants are arriving with few resources and have had to rely on the city's shelter system to a degree not seen in the past. As of September 2023, nearly 60,000 newly arrived migrants were living in the city's shelters, with about two-thirds of them being families with children. Their numbers alone have placed a huge financial pressure on New York City, costing it over $1 billion so far and prompting officials to declare in a state of emergency. Some estimates say the cost of housing could surpass $4.3 billion by July 2024. While this is a significant amount, it would account for about 5% of New York's budget in fiscal year 2022. Legal services for asylum seekers are also stretched thin. Anyone applying for asylum must wait a minimum of six months before receiving a work permit. Many recently arrived migrants are unable to find a lawyer to help them start the asylum application process or are already undergoing the process but unable to work legally. Cities including Chicago, El Paso, Texas, and San Diego have also seen an increase in their migrant populations, though not to the scale of New York City. Yet, in spite of all that has been said concerning the rise in immigration in the U.S., some people still believe it's not all bad news. To see how true that is, we'll discuss some evidence-based impacts of excessive immigration on natives. One potential disadvantage to immigration to the United States is the cost it places on government agencies and taxpayers. For the Department of Homeland Security, which administers U.S. citizenship and immigration services to ensure that no immigrant represents a threat to the country, it requires expenditures at several stages, including background checks, personal interviews, and processing citizenship and naturalization testing for new immigrants. Also, an increase in population due to immigration can lead to higher demand for housing, leading to potential housing shortages or increased housing costs. In nations like Australia and Canada, where housing prices have soared over the past 20 years, migration is one of many factors. But still an important concern that needs to be considered by policymakers before deciding to allow for migration to happen. Already, New York has estimated that it would spend about $5 billion in 2024 to house and feed migrants, with the cost exceeding $12 billion over the next three years if migrants continue to arrive at the same rate. Also, excessive immigration can lead to uncontrolled population growth, leading to overcrowding and strain on infrastructure. No doubt, immigration needs to have a long-term view where the immigrant surplus isn't just short-term, but pays for longer-term situations, such as when immigrants rely on the nation's welfare system and where they can offset the costs of new schools, transit infrastructure, etc. This could also lead to the integration of new cultures, which can then cause social tension and conflict, often due to unacceptable discrimination. Another effect of immigration is an increased job competition. A lot of times, immigration can lead to increased competition for jobs, potentially impacting the employment opportunities for locals. While many migration systems attempt to prevent this by enforcing labor market impact statements upon employers before hiring overseas workers, there are still existing and even recent cases of people missing out on a job that was given to an immigrant, especially if the immigrant is on an open work visa. No doubt, the debate over U.S. immigration reform has become really controversial. While Republican lawmakers accused Democrats of facilitating open borders, the Republican governors of Florida and Texas have spent millions of dollars to transport migrants and asylum seekers to Democrat-led cities, including Washington, D.C. as part of a political stunt. For example, more than 13,000 migrants who arrived in New York in 2023 were brought from Texas by bus. 
Moving forward, the United States needs comprehensive immigration reform that expands legal pathways for migrants to enter the country. Because there are so few pathways currently, many people view making asylum claims as their only option, even though they know they're not likely to succeed, effectively breaking the system. Also, on foreign policy, lending institutions such as the U.S. International Development Finance Corporation needs more flexible rules so that they can prioritize middle-income countries, such as those in Latin America, that are struggling to integrate refugees and asylum seekers into their economies. Immigration sure does have a huge impact on the economy of a nation. Do you think America can handle the threats? Let us know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Until next time, where money matters, we'll see you.